Hello my soccer universe, and so we have exactly the final that I said last week I don't really wanna have, but hey, hey, I think it's an interesting one nonetheless. Between Borussia Dortmund in the third Champions League final and Real Madrid in their umpteenth one, uh, <laughs> they are just a phenomenon. Uh, it has to be said for sure. I think both semifinals were quite interesting overall. And I have to say I found myself a little bit in a pickle of who to really root for. Because yes, I think I was all in on PSG over Dortmund. Because, you know, there is some old love there towards the Parisians. Although I don't like the current incarnation. But yeah, that one was pretty clear although when Dortmund made it I actually said I think they overall deserved that one and I really admire them for uh, the effort they put in there how they completely shut down PSG and then it was do I really want to see another German final in Wembley will I for the first time ever root for Bayern Munich over Real Madrid or should I go you know, Real Madrid, they have at least the Angelotti factor. That's for sure. And that's a huge factor for me. Now, then you have to go in from the team that I'm a fan of, Milan. Um, okay. If Milan will not catch Real Madrid, I think that's pretty clear now. <laughs> it was 9-7 at a point. And yes, then one team went this way, the other one went this way. Uh, so, yeah. They won't catch them. So Real Madrid winning yeah, is another Real Madrid win. They are far, far, far away. Okay, got to deal with that. Bayern Munich winning, meaning they're catching up with Milan. Not liking that. Although, also has, has with a given on recent form. Probably not undeserved as well if Bayern would also move up to 7. Dortmund, don't really care that much because, you know, they, even if they win a second one, that's far away from the seven. So there, there, there you go. I then decided, okay, maybe it's better. Angelotti, anyway, also Milan connected. Maybe a little bit of Real Madrid, but to be honest, I was fairly neutral on that one. I just enjoyed the game and I think it was, a, again, at the second semifinal, definitely had, the, had not only more drama, but you could see that the better quality of players is on there. I think in both cases, the winners in both cases deserve to move on. I think there's no doubt about it uh, in overall, although one has to say if Bayern Munich take a little bit more of their chances in the first leg, we might be talking differently. I think Bayern Munich Real Madrid was a much, much tighter affair than in the end the one that everyone thought is one side towards PSG was ever going to be. Uh, Dortmund? really deserved this one with a very solid defensive performance. That has to be said, uh, bar none. And yes, and we'll talk about this, PSG might point. We hit in both legs six times the woodwork. Yeah, but in both legs, you twice did not show up for the first half, at the very least, and your superstar went completely missing. And that's not a good sign. That's not a gold sign, although I think that PSG overall, I think there is maybe now with Luis Enrique and the way they're building and maybe gets Killian out, maybe there's something that can be built there. You still need to get used to a little bit more seriousness. We'll talk about that as well. But before we go into the matches, I want to actually make another um, point in a way. Uh, you know, last year we had this resurgence of Serie A on the basis that there was Napoli being the faraway leaders and so all that the other Italian teams could do is focus on Europe. I think we had a little bit of that with Inter being so far away. It's just that in the Champions League, the two Italian team, other Italian teams that moved on were just not up to the snuff uh, for uh, at that time. So we see it more in the Europa and the Europa Conference League where the Italian teams can focus on. And I think the same thing is true here in the Champions League for the Bundesliga. Uh, I mean, Leipzig almost eliminated uh, now the finalist Real, uh, Real Madrid, but both Bayern and Dortmund, they knew that Leverkusen is long gone. So our shot at glory, and <laughs> we're all out of the German Cup. Our shot at glory is the Champions League, and that's where I went to dug in. And both teams have to say performed really 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 well really well far above the level that we know from the league 
So that's interesting. I think we see that over and over, over, over again. I also think the big um, arc that Real Madrid had in the 2010s where they won four Champions Leagues, yeah, most of the time Barcelona were the dominant team in that league. So they were focusing more on the Champions League. So there is something to it today. If you have a dominant team in, in the league, but you have some good teams in there, uh, I might actually lift the league. Just look at that. The Premier League, they're all in the title race. They're all tied. They have to go every time. They're all out. Just a theory, but I think there's something to that one. Let's talk first semi-final. PSG against Dortmund. You know the point where I knew that this is not going to happen? That was the point when I saw the TIFO for PSG. That was eerily similar to the one that Manchester City had ahead of their return leg against uh, Real Madrid. When they had the bus with the team going to London, breaking out of a uh, Dortmund logo, which I also found a little bit weird. Uh, I thought this is just too similar and too weird. Be a little bit more orig or or original. The PSG fans are a great fan base that could come up with something better, but you know, it, it was not. And then, yeah, atmosphere was good. And as mo the moment the game kicked off, it went flat. It literally went flat because Dortmund did what Dortmund have done in the first leg. They kept it tight on the back. They were double or triple teaming uh, Kylian Mbappé. So there was a lot of uh, Usman Dembele, who has all the talent in the world. But he is so lackadaisical with it. I mean, he wants to do the cute touch and instead do proper techniques over there. The times where he's just uh, like gliding over, over the ball and trying to show the technique he has, it just drove me nuts. For me, the PSG players that really stood out were Vitinha, it was Fabian Ruiz, those were the players that did at least something. Gonzalo Ramos was a little bit lost up front, but uh, overall, PSG may have had all the possession in the, in, in the world. Dortmund kept it tight, kept it tidy. We're looking comfortable, despite all the pressure. And yes, Kylian Mbappé was isolated. But again, look at what Vinny Jr. did yesterday, who uh, had a much more favorable man manager. But I really would have liked that. Yeah, give me the ball. I'm trying a little bit more. But he was nowhere, nowhere to be seen. And it's two ways. It's one side time Dortmund really realizing this is the guy that we want to pull uh, we, that can make danger. How do we avoid that? Well, by sitting deep so he cannot run behind us. That was a really good idea. But on the other side, I would expect more from the supposedly best player on on, on the planet who so desperately seemingly wants to get a, a trophy for his hometown club. So not good from that as well. And actually, Dortmund Pro should have taken the lead in the first half because ah, 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 Adiemi, another a striker that put in a shift, that really put in a shift, uh, you know, uh, tracking down, like in, the, like in the first leg, he had actually a pretty good good chance. And we also have to say, Fulkrug, whenever he had, he had the ball, his hold the play, absolutely amazing. And then, you know, the midfield working really, really high. Second half. Uh, I started with a bang, uh, Zaire Emery hitting uh, the post from a short di 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 distance. And at that point, Paris, the PSG fans thought, ooh, again? Again? You know, you had the crazy t uh, sequence where you hit twice uh, the post in the first leg or, or, or already. If you equalize there, it might be in a, a different game. That much for sure. And then, uh, and then you get hit by Brandt corner, that almost heads in completely forgotten by every, everyone. Free header. Hummels in probably his last season, because it's widely expected that he will retire at least uh, from Dortmund, had had in makes it 1-0. And I'm sorry, but I think at that moment you had to think this is going to be a steep hill to climb. And you could see the PSG players, they're all way more talented, but they rely too much on their talent instead of playing with each other. This is so damning. And yes, you hit the post one more, one more, one time in the 60th minute. There was a short period, like for five or six minutes, where you really thought PSG are knocking on, on the door. Now they could uh, drag it down. And then they calm, uh, Dortmund could calm it down again. I don't want to say they were comfortable, but they were defending well. And then, yes, there were two more um, where uh, ball was square to kill Mbappé, who takes a weak shot that goes in on the crossbar. And I think a shot from far out. I think by Vitinha, but I'm, I'm not sure, also hit the crossbar. So, yeah, 
On that side PSG were unlucky, but on the other side, as I said, Dortmund really deserved it. The one thing that I didn't necessarily like is, I mean, I, I understand it, but uh, Dortmund then overamped that one. Yes, there's probably some bad blood between the two clubs, you know, there's going back to the Holland days, but uh, as soon as the final whistle game, uh, all the Dortmund players were running towards the fan block of uh, Dortmund to a T. And all the PSG players were just there empty uh, in, in, in the middle of nowhere. And yes, there were some of the bench from Dortmund were shaking hands. But it felt weird. There was no shake hands or whatsoever. And I think for me, this is what sports was about. I mean, uh, you yes, celebrate together a little, a little bit. And it's great to go to the fans as well. But at least acknowledge the opponent. I mean, it was really weird when the PSG fan, uh, PSG went then to their ultras and waved them goodbye. Whereas there was no Dortmund players to be seen. That's weird. I also, I think Dortmund are also majorly lifted, you know, Hummels and Reus, both who will leave and I think they really want to give them a great send off that they should have gotten last season. I think the club is very well aware that they should have gotten the title last season. They threw away the title. So I think that's the part that also plays a major part in this one. Let's go over to Madrid, uh, where it was either then another German final at Wembley or Real Madrid booking for the first time ever a trip to Wembley for a Champions League final. Yes, you won 14 trophies and you, I think you played at least two or three more finals that you lost. But you never played at Wembley. That's a stat out, out there. They played in the UK. Uh, Glasgow and Carker, they will never play, play at Wembley. I, I, I think this is quite amazing uh, stat overall. Um, Unlike the game in Munich, this time it was really the other way around. I mean, the Bernabeu full, again, great display, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, um, and Real Madrid took to Nish Nish Div. And uh, Bayern were a little bit hanging in the ropes. I mean, Bayern could rely back on the Licht. Um, and they tried to control more Real Madrid, but you had already early on Vinny, I think, hitting the post and then Rodrigo in, on the rebound safe from Neuer and this was for large swaths of the game how the game went I mean uh, especially Vinny Jr a lot of danger creating chances and Neuer pulling pulling out safe after safe after safe but it also has to, has to be said that Bayern also put in a, a shift maybe the one player that didn't really as much was Leroy Sané I mean if he would take a page out of the RDME playbook we might look at a different result because he would have the speed. Vinny Jr. against Kimmich alone, this was not working. And here probably uh, Lira Sané could have put in some uh, work as well. But you know, then you take maybe away his creativity. The one thing that I have to say, uh, especially in the first it was clear that Bayern, whenever they got the ball, they rarely ever played forward. They just kept the ball for themselves because they knew actively weak, it's really hard to get the ball off Madrid players. So we have to rely a little bit more on, on uh, you know, giving ourselves a break. And the Real Madrid is not a high pressing team, so you could, could do it. But there was a special sequence towards the end of the first, first half where I really thought, yeah, Bayern is just circulating a ball in their own half. Uh, they're a little bit too, too afraid to go forward to lose the ball because on the counter attack. That was the major problem there. The second half though, and Another problem was, of course, the Gnabry had to come off, but then Davis comes on. And then the second half starts again. Uh, there were great Neuer saves in there, but Bayern a little bit more dangerous now on the counter attack. And sometimes you feel that if they would have played it sometimes a little bit nicer, it could have worked better. I think they exchanged chances early on, and then Harry Kane plays it on to the, uh, Davis, who curls it. You know, goes past um, Carvajal. Curls it and Rüdiger and curls it nicely in, in, in the 68th minute. It's 1-0 Bayern. And to be honest, from that point on, Real Madrid was rattled. And it seemed like a Bayern, they just had found the right mojo to maybe see this out. Uh, I think... Not taking away anything from any, 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 anybody, but to me it felt it was really going well. There was one... One scene, I mean, three minutes later, there was the equalizer, which would have been uh, uh, Alfonso Davis' own goal, uh, kind of weirdly. But 
Uh, that was then uh, because uh, Nacho really pushed Kimmich in, into the face, had to be taken off for sim simply for that foul. And uh, you saw also Angelotti, as soon as the team went down, he brought a modern Kamavinga for Kroos and Germany. Kind of, you know, now we need to wrap it up a little bit. And then came the other mistake. I mean, uh, Bayern then found some counter uh, attacking chances, they played them rather poorly. I mean, they, if they had a little bit more speed up front, then, and yes, there's another point. So they had to count him off, Kim and Jay came on, because Tuchel decided, we're gonna hunker in. And to me, it was even more a damn damning then. You know, uh, Ramadur Prime Diaz and Joselu, more him a little bit later, whereas uh, Tuchel took off his two superstars in Kane and Musiala for Chupa Moting, who has no speed, and for Thomas Müller. Yes, I, I, I like Tom, Tom, Thomas Müller, but it's also not an opportunity when you have like a Matthias Tell out there, who has a whole lot more speed, for instance. But it basically, they, from a position where they had some control of the game, they then just went all the way back, gave the ball more to Real Madrid and were just trying to see it out. And I thought, especially the moment that Kane and Musiala went off, I thought, oh man, Tuchel is really, really gambling and it did not pay off. It did not pay off. Um, the equalizer came because the hero went to zero, Manuel Neuer. First, Instead of Hall, Hall holding the ball, he plays it out really, really complicated. Out to the left, through three Real Madrid players, who of course in the, in the ball, ball comes in. Vinny Jr. Uh, takes a shot that Naya is misjudging. It hits him in the chest into, on the chin, falls to Jose Lu, who stays in the game and he becomes the unlikely hero to get an equalizer in the 88th minute. And at that moment, it was, for me, the writing was on wall, but I need to make it to penalties. Otherwise, who is going to score goals for them? And then three minutes, three minutes later, uh, Jose Lo scores the winner after Rüdiger was not offside and um, he could tap it out uh, uh, in from a short, short distance in, 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 into the empty net. Jose Lo, Jose Lo, the stopgap solution because we don't want to buy another striker here, gets the winner. This is one of those incredible So He's now in Real Madrid, he's Israel, though he is anything but a star striker. And I find this uh, a really, really good story. However, the story didn't end there. I mean, we had an extraordinary long stoppage time and Bayern were trying and it seemed all fruitless, except for one. Where a deep ball was seemingly played onto Müller, who was offside, and the Maserabi was not offside. Gets the ball, then from that it falls to the Licht, who puts it in. The problem is, when the ball was played, the linesman put the flag up, referee wh wh whistled it dead, Real Madrid player stop, so we cannot really say whether the goal would have been scored. But that was a major, 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 major reason. That's the one where Bayern players will hang up. Uh, to say, yeah, uh, we got cheated, I'm, 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 this is can not help me. But in the end, I think Real Madrid were a much better team on the night. And I think Bayern have only themselves to blame. And unfortunately, it has to go on Thomas Tuchel. I think hunkering it in and trying to see the game out, this was not the right decision. And also, and a goalkeeping mistake can, can, can happen, but Neuer should have held on to that ball for a little bit longer. And nothing happens in the 88th minute. Bayern looked like they're seeing it out. But it's the Bernabeu, you always can turn it around. And that's Real Madrid for you. In any case, so we have the final in Wembley. I will do, of course, a final preview ahead of that. At the moment, we have, of course, Real Madrid, the big favorites over Borussia Dortmund, although it's a little bit tighter than I would have expected. Model says 57 to 43 in favor of Real Madrid. It will be an interesting one. Just one final note before I go out. Um, Didi Hamann he was on Sky Sports Austria, the expert. And my rule of thumb is, if Didi Hamann is complaining about something, he's usually completely off. And so it was yesterday, because the Real Madrid players were celebrating with jerseys that had number 15 on there. But I think it said on, the, on top, I didn't really read it, but it said, let's go for 15. That was the message that, that, that they were saying. But he said, it's disrespectful to the opponent, Dortmund, to already put the 15 up, 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 up there. Dude, if you don't know Spanish, keep your mouth shut. But Didi Hamann, uh, let's put it that way. 
he is known for his opinions, but he's mostly wrong. So there you go. What do you what do you think of these semifinals? Uh, do you like the final? I think it's an interesting world. It's a uh, very big contrast in a way. The glamour club to the classic workman's club. So that's good. I mean, even the cities don't really compare in in, in in a way. In any case, please give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and we'll see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!